There's, there's nobody in this room that's 20 years old, right? There's, no, there's not even anybody in this room. Is anybody 30 or under? Are we gonna do ages? Yeah. No, no. They're 30 or under, Ira. No, I say no. that because the first thing you said blew my mind that, because somehow I did do that experiment with the box and the hole in yeah. school. And then oh, they brought goodness. it forward for my kids to do too. Um, oh. They went to Shore and Wayne River. And I thought that really explains what's going on. And that was a brilliant uh, sort of history of the camera and the physicality of what's going on. So that, I think, is important because now you grow up and you get one of these $2,000, $1,400 objects. And they're, they're amazing. These are amazing devices. Um, and the proof of that is I have professional equipment. I'm not using it. I'm using consumer devices to uh, film us tonight. And I think that's proof of that. So yes, the obvious question is, how did you get started? Because you're obsessed. <laughs> Clearly. We, we, Clearly. We, we need to learn about your obsession. Okay. Um, so as I had mentioned before, I learned the technique in college. And there is one other technique and aspect of it that what's interesting is you can actually paint with a flashlight onto objects. That's another application of the technique. And I just loved it. And it was, I did it for my senior project. I loved it. I remember being in my parents, you know, basement, like that, you know, down there with lights, you know, making these crazy art pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I kind of took it as far, I think, as you could take it at the time with flashlights, because that's all you had, right? Um, and in recent years... So what, how, how old are you when, you when you're experimenting like this? Uh, I guess what? 17, 17, 18? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and I got the whole traditional, you know, film, dark room, that whole thing, you know. Um, and then a couple years ago, um, I got involved with my local historical society, the Rocky Point Historical Society. Um, a couple board members happen to be here tonight. Um, and I thought to myself, uh, I gave sort of a challenge into my being. Um, I love his history, right? I love historical sites since I was a kid. And you, I, like, you like documentation? Uh, being, like, being, yeah, yes, yeah. but also being there, you know, because mm -hmm. even as a kid, like I was like, Disney, eh, you know, like, eh, all right, it's fake, right? But we went to Colonial Williamsburg and I was like, oh, no way, this is real, you know, this is how, you know, I would look at the foundation of a house and be like, wow, look at this. I'm, I'm seven, <laughs> right? Like Space Mountain? Yeah, whatever, maybe, I don't know, but did you see that? Mm. You know, and so when I moved into Rocky Point and got involved with the Historical Society, I thought to myself, like, how do I help? How do I lend something to recreate or, or give this feeling to people who don't already feel it. Like it always blows my mind that people aren't amazed by history, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, how do I, how do I do it? You know, create this excitement uh, about living history, right? Spaces that, that I believe, that I sense uh, people are still there, right? Their, their essence is still there. So I had left it at that. I said, okay, some, something's gonna come to me, some sort of, you know, art form, photography, something will come to me. And I I can't say it was a flash of lightning or anything like that, but it just hit me. I was like, light painting, light painting. Because you can create the essence of life, right? Of motion, of energy, of color, shape, in a place where it normally, in, in our sight, isn't there, but is there. In, on an energetic level, right? So it was a way that I sort of thought, wow, I think I can recreate that feeling and people could see it and feel it at the same time. So in other words, Alina really thinks differently. <laughs> That's my encapsulation, that, that you're, you're a visual person and you want to use your brain and your visualization to communicate things 
that you think is so deep inside of you that you want to portray to other people. That's what, that's, that's what I get out of this. Now, the concept of light is really interesting. There's like four or five different types of light in this room, at least, right? We have LEDs, incandescents, all kinds of crazy stuff. But I, I just recently got the concept of reflection, like that color is not that color because it's that color. That brown is that brown because the light hits it and then like I didn't get that at first, right? It's, like, it's a hard one. Colors only exist because of light reflection. Right, and it's reflecting. Is that because of the density of the object? Not to get too deep here, but I just want to understand it, what makes color seen. Um, or are we going off topic? A, a little bit, because I'm not a, a, a You're color. not an expert. I'm not an expert on color. I do know that right when color is, is reflected, it's that means that all the colors are absorbed except the one that's being reflected. Right which I still can't wrap my head around, you know, like, how does that work? Like I see, you know, like you said, brown, right? I can see brown because brown is being reflected, but all the other colors are being absorbed. Right. Um, and yes, it has something to do with the texture of the material. Um, certain materials will absorb more light and more color than others. Um, we do a lot, do some of this with, video and with photography mm -hmm. especially product photography um and yeah it's it there's a lot going on there's all there's always those factors going on so, so you said this dates back to 1880 the technique when it was discovered the, te the yeah. technique right mm -hmm. so today we have these phones and we have billions of selfies right that's what we do with phones that's one of the things we do with them so my question to you is the few times I've tried this and I want to, and I'm at a beach and I'm seeing stars and I want to get myself in that picture, which I haven't seen yet. That's got to be tough. And what we didn't touch upon also, if it's possible, do you have to do that in post to make that possible? Because you can't really take a time lapse thing and have yourself go, look what I did. Right? Right? That's impossible, isn't it? It, it is and it isn't. Um, I mean, in post, you can put yourself in the picture. I get that. Right, but you can get one shot of you and okay. the stars at the same time. And that's that other technique of light painting. Okay. Because basically what you would need to do is, you know, you would set your camera to the stars and the landscape, right? And then you would, you would be standing still in the landscape and then someone behind the camera would take a flashlight okay. and essentially paint you in with light. As if, if you can imagine if that flashlight were a paintbrush and you would, you know, you would just go like head to toe and paint you in. See, I, I wouldn't have known that, that's really yeah. cool. So, so it's like a team, yeah. team so effort you, to get that right. Yeah, so you can get, it depends on how much you want to do, but you can get both you and the landscape and a light painting all at the same time. Yeah, the other thing, marrying the old yeah, with the new, cool. you know, this year AI became really, really huge. And I think uh, <clears throat> the future of AI is something that probably nobody here can describe or imagine. But, you know, there are videos out, but you can't tell what's real and what's not real. And um, that in itself is scary. But, you know, relate that back to like what you, you're, you're doing here. I mean, what, what Everything that I saw you demonstrate is real. It's like I thought what was really cool was the star trails, right? That's really what happened. So where have you experimented or do you have any comment on where we're gonna go with AI and this technique? Wow, that's, that's a tough one. I didn't tell you, I, I would ask easy questions. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just, Dipping my toe yeah. a little bit. We I think all. a lot yeah. of ours, a lot of us are, right? Um, and what I see the possibility for myself, I think, is to get ideas from. Mm. You know, like the other day, in fact, what did I type in? I typed, um, <laughs> this is this, this is the, uh, this is how I think. <laughs> you typed this into Google. Uh, into into chat. Chat GPT. Yeah, I typed. All right, um, so you you're further along than I some did. people. I typed. I like um, that. Clouds of color. <laughs> what what did you what, what did you? <laughs> clouds of color. I was like, well, you know, work on that. 
I mean, what can you come up with? Clouds of color. And it was interesting. It, it was it was quite it was more clinical than I thought it would be. I thought it would be poetic, like me. I'm thinking poetic, and it was like, well, <laughs> clouds reflect light and create rainbows and a certain density of moisture. And I was like, oh, whoa, you know. Mm. And um, so I see it, and I was actually so interesting that you say I was titling because some of the artwork that I have out front, right? And I was titling, you know, make creating titles for them. And I was like, I can come up with a better one. Let me see what Chat GPT can come up with. You know, because I did like chi, right? Like uh, going raising raising the chi is was one of the titles that I wrote. And I was like, hmm, can do something else. Maybe Chat GPT, you know. And what else unexpected? Mm could come up from that experience. So yeah. that's how I'm using it. You know, and and the thing with the technique is that there's a ton, there's just literally a ton you can do with it in terms of um, context and silhouetting and multiple sources of light. So let, let's that look at I could see getting ideas. Let's from. bring that to to the commercial aspect of photography. So we both have friends that are probably wedding photographers um, or commercial photographers. And I quite, I don't know if you're a commercial photographer. I actually don't know that. I know you're a teacher. But what kind of techniques would be interesting for, for example, a, a, a groom and a bride? I mean, how, would, how could you make that different? Or maybe you've done this. Um, I mean, my feeling is one thing would be everybody's got a picture in the sunlight at the docks. Why not do something in starlight at the docks? That could be amazing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done it like that, like same with a wedding party or whatever, but mm. certainly, yeah, like couples, mm. like uh, engagement photos, you know, portraits, couples portraits. Sure. I've seen it and I think it's 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 great and hey, give me a call. <laughs> yeah, uh, good. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so you're commercially available as well. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And and I do and I do, I do do commercial photography as well. And and you teach? Uh, and I teach in a college. In college. Mm -hmm. And you also do private, uh, you know, because I see one of the things that I don't know if you do this, but I would love for you to do this because I would do it immediately. Just go out to Rocky Point Beach one night and let's just just hang out and take pictures of stars for three hours. I want to do that immediately. She almost got us to go out in the kayaks with light in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> yeah, they're all signed up. They're all signed up. Yeah, the only thing that happened is we ran out of um, season. Because we it was like in oh it's start, starting it's to starting get too cold so it's starting to be warm so so That's I right. I want you to do that honestly um, who's, who's, so who's if when you go out into the other room later look to your left um, there was a photographer friend of mine that um, I, actually I'm not going to tell you what it is just look to your left there's a picture and I want someone to tell me what that picture is of it's a low light you, I don't even think I told you right no I don't think so no. yeah so it's behind the bar. So take a look at it. We can go to questions now, actually. Well, I just want to make a comment that Moon Kiss Media also did for Sierra Club for several years. A lot of the photography was very inspiring. Okay, fantastic. So let's let's do that. I mean, I, I really could talk to you for uh, forever, but I want to stay on schedule here. Who's got a question for Alina? Um, is this something like you download in like Google Play? Like the lighting part on an Android, Android. In order to do the the technique, yeah. Um, on an Android, you don't need an extra app. You can, but you need to go into something called Pro Mode on the Android. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where that is because I'm not sure. But that you can, I'm sure, Google and find out where Pro Mode. All that really is doing is it's allowing you to change the aperture and the shutter speed. And what you need is the shutter speed. Because and once you do that and and turn the lights out, you're you're able to do it. And and we'll demo the technique in a bit and you'll you'll be able to see how it's done. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's the nice thing about Android is you don't need an extra app. Anybody else with a question? We're just gonna hand you the mic just so it's recorded. Anybody with a question? 
Charles, you probably have another question. I know you do. I just feel you do. Or Ira, you have a question. You have a camera, so we want questions from you. So just a uh, nature reference with the light would be in the fall with the maple leaves with like just an orange as another example of your color and how you see it because of what happens with the opposite of photosensitivity. Yes, absolutely. By the way, is the opposite of what you're doing here time lapse? Would you call, would you say that was term for the opposite of what you're doing? Um it's similar. It's similar. It's just the amount of light, really. Time lapse is a series of photos and they don't necessarily have to be long exposures. Right. So usually when you see a time lapse, it's, you know, like say over the course of an hour or two, right? And, right. and say, you know, well, sort of- A course of an hour or two that becomes 30 seconds. Right, right. Yeah. So it's a series, it's just a series of photos. Right. And uh, they, they could be light paintings. Um, and I've seen that as well. Like I've seen, uh, say like boats on water, you know, uh, in a time lapse. They don't really create a streak so much. Mm -hmm. um, but well, I think what's an interesting technique just to go on that is with the boats on the water, but at the same time the camera's moving while the sun's coming up. So you got yeah. three different yeah. things happening at once. Yeah. Which I, is interesting. Yeah. And I've, Bought some equipment in order to do that. <laughs> I haven't used yet. Sliders, you bought sliders. Mm, I know yeah. you did. Sliders and um, rotators. Why don't you talk about the uh, technique that is out there on the easels? Because you're 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 printing something and it's on. A, is it on metallic? Acrylic. Acrylic. Okay. Yeah. Talk to us about that. And like the idea of that is that becomes just something beautiful to put on the wall. But ex just explain the, the technique in terms of, it's a print and then it's acrylicized, for lack of a better word? Um, these, there's two different ways apparently they do it. The, the company that I use is located in Canada and they actually print directly on the back of the acrylic. So you're seeing, you're kind of, it's, it's a little bit, optics are really interesting, right? Because you're seeing the image through a one eighth piece of acrylic and it, oh. You know, it adds dimension to it. I tried printing these on paper and they fell completely flat. Right. Because there's so much black, you know, there's so much uh, um, ink. ink. And the, the, the quality of the lights are thin, right. so they get lost. So, um, in fact, I was in an exhibit um, with Gilda and that was when I found that out <laughs> because I tried printing it on paper and I was like, uh oh, am I gonna try something else? And I tried the acrylic. So what's what's nice about it is it retains a bit of that dimension, you know. And what's cool too is the technique can be done in a sort of dimensional way. And we're gonna try that outside, cool. where when the light moves around, you get dimension. You get a bit of dimension. And the acrylic, kind of like a screen you know, it, it retains that bit of dimension, so. Have, have you ever seen uh, examples of this done in a 360 mode? Uh, no. Ideas. Well, it, it, what's... I don't even know if that's possible, right? It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna find out. We okay. are gonna find out together, I think. Yeah, I like that. One thing, however, I will throw out there is I'm starting to experiment with, now oh, this will. That's okay, that's a, that's a nice break for us, I like that. Um, I'm starting to play with the next manifestation of this technique, right. which is light painting videos. Okay. And if you think about it. It shouldn't be. It, sh it shouldn't be possible. It's not possible. Correct. Yeah. So it's it's software okay. that do that's similar to a time lapse. Right. Because it's the same concept. It's stitching images together. Right. Except that like a the the object of a time lapse is for you to see the landscape, right? So you're seeing boats and you're seeing landscapes and you're seeing things like that's because that's what the goal is. So really it's the same concept, just light paintings. So you're seeing those streaks 
but they're in a video form. And it's just wild. And it's only possible because of software. Very cool. Question? Alina, have you ever um, thought about, or can you use a drone in any way in this kind of painting? <laughs> get so excited. I, I can't help myself. Um, I've never tried a drone. Um, I want to. Um, I don't, well, there's two elements going on there with drones. One is the drone is moving, so it won't really work. It doesn't right? have to, it could, it could stay stationary. It would be far away from a possible light source, but not the stars, but I don't know if that's an advantage. Like, depending on what you're doing, like, even you got to be really still is what you're saying yeah like right. you know like i even by so like on my regular dslr camera you want to put your camera on it on timer self timer when you do this technique because even the act of touching the shutter button wow. shakes it shakes the camera that's how sensitive um oh, this is. Oh, that's what i was going to ask you what's the name of the device Thomas knows about this device. He's used it. It's interpolate. What is it, the device called oh, that, um, that does it automatically for you? What's it called? Intervalometer. Thank intervalometer. You. You, how do you say that? I forget. That's an incredible word. And I used one the other night because I was trying to get light trails and I nearly smashed it because it's so annoying. Intervalometer. Do you use it? Intervalometer. <laughs> I uh, use it. Yeah, because. The Unbelievable. Yeah, there's such a pain to learn. Yes. So yes. the app yes. controls your DSLR? Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. On the newer DSLR. It, it, is, is there um, an advantage to using a mirrorless DSLR as opposed to uh, a non mirrorless um, in this technique? In this technique? A lower, little bit. Lower light, right? Uh, yes, because the technology is a bit better. Um, and two, believe it or not, just that little shutter movement right. will shake the camera even more. There is a way to bypass the mirror moving, um, but less movement, the more crisp an image. So there is an advantage. So, so you mentioned ISO, like I used to buy Fuji 400 film. Mm -hmm. That was great film. <laughs> and I remember the Fuji 400 film gave me these sharp pictures and the idea was, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I can use this film, what, to, to, to take pictures inside? Why, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah I used the 100 for sunlight pictures mm -hmm. and the 400 for, was yeah. gonna make me a rock star because I was gonna be able to take, you know, pictures of bands inside, yep. right? I remember yep. that. Mm -hmm. What numbers are we approaching now? Am I seeing something over a hundred thousand? Did I hear something crazy? On a phone, yeah, they're over a hundred thousand. That's insane. Because the aperture, the like now we have three lenses too, right? Let's talk about having multiple lenses on a phone. I love this phone. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, and each one, the aperture is slightly different. And they're about one point two is the aperture, which. I don't, I mean, if you, you know, yeah, so, uh, what was I going to say, um, oh yeah, so the, so the ISOs, ISOs, yeah, are, I, I mean, I think there's like a hundred thousand, the newest mirrorless cameras have, I think it's like 10,000 or 15,000, Sony, 15,000, 20,000, it's crazy, right, it's just unimaginable, but that's the way the technology is going, and low light, it's amazing. It's really, it's, it's, it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's, it is. I can understand why you're passionate. Yeah. And especially in video, too. Yeah. You know, that really, because you can do more of the cinematic yeah. feel in low light. I, us professionals are, t are carrying around fake big cameras so we can still get paid for our jobs, but we, we're really doing it with this. <laughs> That's the standing joke. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, I want to, I want to, I want to thank you for this. This was awesome, mm. awesome talk. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thanks, Tim. Thanks so much for doing this. this yeah, absolutely. Great. All right, uh, we're gonna have some fun on the demo. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's, let's do it.